How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of Oxbow up in this piece. I'm loving these Oxbow four-pack bottles, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I did one of their uh, farmhouse pale ale. Um, it was quite nice. I'll probably post this one along with that one. And this is their dance language. Um, another uh, farmhouse ale, but this is a single-source honey. Um, what else we have? Oh, 8% alcohol by volume. That kind of jumped out to me. I, I didn't even look at the ABV. I just assumed it was low ABV, so yeah. That happened, and okay, here's a date, right? Okay, the other one I couldn't find a date on, and I think I just missed it because this looks like it was bottled in October 2nd of 2019, unless they're from Europe, and they date shit like from Europe, then it's from February 10th, 2019. I doubt that. It's from October, and uh, yeah, done, done. Enjoy with one, within one year, so we're within that period of time. Let's dive into the sucker, see what's what. Now, honey in a farmhouse ale, 8%, mind you. So, 8% farmhouse ale. You're like, okay, a little bit beefier version of a Saison. Not by much. Saison, you know, 6, 6.5%. Six so, you're talking about 8%. Leave a little bit in the bottom there. Um, you know, a little bit beefier version of that. Uh, but you have that honey coming on. So, you're talking about a farmhouse ale. It's not going to be sweet to begin with. So, you expected something that is going to be... You know, not overly sweet, but kind of a little bit more kind of oomph to it. Uh, but then you add that honey to it. It can go a couple different ways. Honey affects mouthfeel quite a bit for me. Uh, it could go a little bit kind of, I call it like a buttery feeling. And I always associate it with like a Jamaican kind of rum, you know, like a Caribbean kind of rum. If you've ever drank that as opposed to, you know, Bacardi generic kind of rum, um, it, ha it tends to have this kind of oily, slick kind of buttery texture to it. Uh, that's how uh, honey can come off to me a lot of times, mouthfeel-wise. And it also tends to be a little bit more of a drying component. Now, you would think, honey, okay, you know, that's going to be sweeter. You're adding a sweetener to the beer itself. But the same um, the enzyme that they use in brute beers, which dries everything out, is also in honey. So if you're talking about organic, not pasteurized honey, you can end up with a quite a bit drier beer. So label-wise, it's awesome. I love Oxbow's bottles. Label's the whole nine. So we're not going to sit here and kind of... Go over that because I love them and uh, man, just looks like a farmhouse beer, you know. Tiny head on our tight, compact, soft haze, exactly what you'd expect from a little farmhouse jam. Let's get a nose, exactly what you expect from a farmhouse beer as far as a nose go. Like, it has this soft, peppery component, there's a big kind of like cardamom, coriander kind of thing floating around there. I think I said this about the last one I did from them. But the big difference on this one is a sweet component. So I thought it was going to be a little bit less sweet, but there's this kind of sweet, but it's not like a candied sugar, malty sweet. It has to be that honey at work. It's not a, a like a nose of honey, um, but there's this sweet, there's this bigger, more robust, rounded kind of sweetness um, that you typically don't get unless you use something that's a little bit more of a flabby kind of bigger kind of sweet component you know it's not sharp like sugar it's not sharp like dextrose it's not sharp like a lot of like smaller grains can come off yeah that smells nice i like that there's this there's this kind of like um fresh field like a freshly like a uh, first cutting i don't know if you uh uh, first cutting when you uh, for farm people out there they know what I'm talking about like when you feed like hay um and um uh, like to well, how do I put this man herky jerky reviews it happens sometimes um so you know when you get like uh like hay and you to feed a horse or animal or something like that there's a couple different cut cuttings you get first cuttings tend to be like a little bit more straw like a little bit more kind of like dried out not as green not as vibrant so it lacks that that's kind of how this comes off is like a first cutting of of hay uh for an animal that's kind of how it comes off so i guess you would say it's your classic kind of barnardy hayness but it's not green there's no kind of like moisture to it it's a little bit kind of sun bleached and stuff like that. So you have that little bit of soft sweetness that's elevated beyond the grain. That's probably your honey at work. You have this cool kind of grainy kind of hay component. I assume there's kind of that's wheat at play in combination with the base malts of the beer. It smells really interesting. I'm actually quite curious to see how it tastes. There's just a little bit subtle tartness to it too, which is kind of fun. I didn't mention that yet. I'm kind of curious to see how it comes out in the taste. Cheers. Cheers. 
So, at the outset of this, I kind of talked about honey. Wow. And how it can be a drying component because of the enzyme that's in Brip Bears. That's going on here. This is aggressively dry. Man, this is dry. Wow. Yeah. There's no sugar in this at all residually it is finished completely there's nothing left in this beer i don't like it actually um yeah i mean it is really it's almost like a, it's honestly it's a brut version of an eight percent saison take your tank seven because that's how this comes off and i think i said that about the pale ale is tank seven in kind of vibes not necessarily exactly like this is probably a quite a bit more um in proximity to what Tank 7 would be from Boulevard Brewing, one of my favorite saisons, farmhouse sales of all time. But it's the Brut version of that. And I think they actually make that beer. Um, I actually might have actually reviewed that beer, um, to be perfectly honest with you. But yeah, it's like that big wheat component. I think that was what I was getting on the kind of grain kind of nose. It doesn't translate that way in the nose, but it came that off that way in the actual taste. That coriander, peppery, spicy kind of thing coming off um, in the nose definitely translates in the taste. But I thought there was going to be a little bit of sweetness to this beer. Dried out completely and attenuated to the absolute end. Man, burps. I like it because at the first sip was like dry. The second one was actually even more dry. Now each subsequent sip, a little bit more acclimated to that dryness. And they start to get a little bit more out of the beer because it's not just punching you in the tongue with dryness. I'm starting to get these like soft kind of peachy kind of orchardy notes, fruit orchard kind of skinny kind of notes from it. It's tasty, it's fun. I'm not gonna sit here and say this is my favorite kind of farmhouse beer I've had in the history of mankind. Um, but it's fun. And like like I said, each sip I take, just a little bit more to it. The honey starting to come to a head. There's a little bit of richness to it. So it's a very, very fun beer from a couple different aspects. But I think this is one of the better take your time, sit, and enjoy it kind of beers. Cause I, or even have a couple. I mean, 8%. It's not necessarily a session beer. But this is getting more fun as it warms up. There's things that are opening up. Not that it was overtly cold to begin with. It was probably about 48, 50 degrees. But it's starting to open up with each sip. A little bit warmer, a little bit warmer. And then you're starting to get a little bit more out of the beer. And that's your palate acclimating. That's the beer warming up. A whole bunch of different stuff come, um, uh, uh, coming through with that time on the beer. And that's probably the funnest thing I like about this beer is that it's just changing with each sip. Very cool. That's probably the coolest part. Yeah, I like it. Every sip I take, I like it more. Let's put it that way. But that ABV, man, 8%. Oof. God, farmhouse ale. Oof. Yeah. I, I, they probably did it on purpose because they knew they were going to use honey and they knew the process that's going to happen. So they're like, let's do a bigger beer, knock out that sweetness, see what happens. It's fun. So let's talk about it. Is this one of the better farmhouse beers I've had as of late? Yes, it is. Um, it's not going to win Mount Rushmore status for me um, just because I think I like their, some of their lower ABV, ABV stuff. Better, more particularly, the Pale Ale that I'll probably post the same time I post this one. And while it is one of the cooler kind of sipper beers um, that, like I said, kind of grows as you drink it, um, it's it's still not just like end-all, be-all epicness for me. So not necessarily, it, it, it deserves more than that, actually. I shouldn't, because I'm talking about it in kind of like a ho-hum kind of way. It's way more than ho-hum. Um, so it's definitely in the conversation. It's not Mount Rushmore status. You guys know what I'm talking about. Value availability. Again, these things typically run like four, 12 to 14 bucks a four pack of bottles all day with that. Their price point has shifted to something way more affordable and I really dig it and leave you with if you like what, will you like this beer? If you like farmhouse beers, if you like dry beers, you like brut beers, you like farmhouse beers, you like uh, Saison, this is going to do you. It might not be, again, the best beer you've ever had in your life, but this is going to kind of, I think it's just something that you'd appreciate if this is the kind of style of beer you really enjoy. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive. You want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little Burt beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>